But there's a third reason to redeem the time, and this one is actually the most important reason of all because, you know, in another sense, death really isn't the end of time. It's just the last chapter of time as we're experiencing it right now. It is really the first chapter of a different form of time, which we call eternity. And the main reason that you and I want to redeem the time is because the way we spend our time today is going to have consequences for all of eternity. Galatians 6-7 teaches us that whatever a man sows, that will he also reap. God is saying in that verse that life operates on the law of the harvest, which says that what I plant today, I will harvest in my future. In other words, what I do with my time today is going to bring consequences in my future. Now, there's nothing difficult to understand about that. We all know that if we go to work today, we're going to get a paycheck and feed the family tomorrow. If, we, if I'm lazy today, we go hungry tomorrow. That's sowing and reaping. That's cause to make. That's, that's a very simple concept, right? Until we try to apply the concept to this word right here, eternal. Would you underline this word on your paper? Because here's where the problem comes. We tend to think through this process of sowing and reaping, this, this cause and effect, only to the point of death. But you know what? Death is not where the consequences of how I spend my time today are going to end. Friend, that is where the real consequences are all going to begin. Because you can actually think of all of life, all of time in this world as just planting. We're just sowing right now. And then all of eternity, you and I are going to be reaping back the consequences of what we chose to plant in this short little season of time. But the problem with that is that when I try to associate how I'm going to be spending my time today, even here at this convention, with what it's going to produce in eternity, you know, that's a very difficult thing for me to do. Because when I try to think about eternity, and I try to picture that word, that concept in my mind, I am trying to picture something that is infinite. I mean, we're talking about time without end, time that just goes on forever and forever and forever. And you know what? My limited little finite brain has a very difficult time fully getting around the concept of something that is infinite. It's almost like there's a little circuit breaker in there that snaps off. By that I mean, now, right here beside the podium, there's an electrical outlet. If I were to bring two big appliances up here onto the platform, set them in there, uh, set them here, plug them in there, and then rev them both up on full power at the same time, somewhere in this hotel there's a circuit breaker that's going to cut off, and it isn't going to let any power get through. Now that's a little picture for you of what our brains do when we try to think about eternity, because we're trying to think about something so overwhelming to us, we can't fully understand eternity, can we? And so we just shut it out. And we don't make the connection between how I'm spending my time today, even in the ministry that you're called to, and what the result of that is going to be in eternity. But you know what? Until we do find some way to make that connection, make that association, we're never going to have the frame of reference. We really need to redeem the time. And as I began to struggle with that problem, I began to ask God a few years back, God, isn't there some way that I can give people a picture of eternity so maybe they could see it and get a handle on what that really means and so I went to the book of world records and I tried to find there the largest number that anybody had ever officially named now one of the numbers I found there was this one it's called 10 duo trigon tillion now this is a one followed by 100 zeros 10 to the hundredth power now I think everybody would agree with me that's a pretty big number right but, uh, but let me just take a second to explain for you how big this number actually is. Now, probably the biggest number we could really use in real life would be the one that talks about our national debt <laughs> right now. Our U.S. government owes somewhere around $7 trillion. I'm saying that with a T, trillion dollars. Well, let's just see how much a trillion of something would be. Okay, there's 10. There's 10,000, 10 million, 10 billion, 10 trillion. Right there is the biggest number we can actually use, and it's not even off the first line. <laughs> Let me give you a little better illustration. A little while back, I was um, up in New York sharing this. A man came up to me after the service and said, Hey, Rick, I'm real interested in that number you're talking about because I'm a math professor at the local college. He said, I thought you'd like to know that we have tried to calculate the number of atoms in the entire known visible universe. We think it's something like a 1 followed by 85 zeros. That's going to bring us down to right here. So, what am I saying about this number, 10 to a trillion to Simply this, that it is so big, it is so enormous, there's no way to use it. Because there's not 10 to a trillion to of anything, as far as we can tell.